So in the first two episodes of this series, we discovered a UFO mystery, hidden treasure, bones possibly belonging to a Bigfoot, unique and creepy masks, and a whole lot more. But today, I think this episode will highlight some of the creepiest secrets that are hidden in Red Dead Redemption 2, which is actually quite fitting since today, the day this video is going live, is Halloween. But I do want to start off by saying thank you to everyone for all the support on this series so far, and if you want to see more, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Nonetheless, some of you guys have been messaging me about creepy things happening in your travels, and the specific encounter we're going to be discussing and somewhat investigating happens in the Bayou region of the map. Right now I think this arguably is Red Dead Redemption 2's strangest secret, but to get a little more specific with the location, the secret encounter occurs in the western part of the Blue Water Marsh region, right below and around the B and L letters of Blue Water Marsh, and furthermore it seems the secret only happens between midnight to about 4 a.m., and it's completely dark and foggy out. Those are the keys for this to trigger. When I first got to this region, I was just exploring, and a random woman's voice was saying, come here, and I love you. I didn't think anything of this, I didn't see the woman, I thought this was just a stranger, but I did camp out right in this area, and after I teared down my camp right around 1 or 2 a.m. at night, this happened. I always loved you. I always loved you. Yeah, so this legit terrified me because it was so unexpected and came out of the blue. Now, following this encounter, I decided to continually camp out in this area, and well, many more interactions happened. What am I to do? I gave you everything. Everything I had. I... No one will have me now. You said... You said all them things. Never loved me.
But yeah, one of these encounters got cut off because of an alligator that I had not seen, so this area and traveling around at this time of night is extremely dangerous. But so far it seems this woman fell in love believed she would get married. Her parents didn't sound like they liked the guy. Eventually he did something or left and her father threatened him with a gun when he returned. The woman sounds like she forgave him, but he may have been ready to move on, which may make sense of this last encounter I ran into. I still am not 100% sure on what exactly happened, but it looks like she haunts part of the bayou, with this being where she ended her life. You can see the rope, and a crate she kicked to end everything, but it seems she talks to us as if we're her former lover. Anyway, this certainly is one of the most creepy yet unique secrets I've ever seen in a video game, which leads to our second secret ghost interaction. This one happens northwest of Rhodes, close to the state's border, and once again this moment seems to only happen around 2am, and this is the ghost train. So I went back and checked this ghost train in first person, and when I rode into the train it felt as if it was really there, which made my horse stumble around a bit, but eventually this train just kind of disappears. Very strange, but it seems late at night some really unique and crazy things happen. We have the UFOs, the ghost that haunts part of the bayou, and now this ghost train. Rockstar Games really has added some insane interactions that likely 99% of people won't be able to find in their travels. Nonetheless, speaking of a unique interaction we next have is the talking giant which can only be activated after you have studied 30 animals and completed the story's first chapter but once that's accomplished you make your way close to the wapiti reservation and once you cross a bridge a bunch of birds will fly away and this is insane but you actually need to follow the birds it took me a moment or two to understand that the birds were my guide but the birds eventually will bring you to a lonely giant who seems to be hiding or locked away behind a bunch of giant rocks, but he does talk to Arthur. I've always wanted a real friend. Someone to discuss the human condition with, you know? Uh, I don't know much about that. Neither do I. Be well, friend. Be well. Now if you choose to come back around 3 to 4 days later, the giant will again have another conversation with you. Happy to see you have returned. Nice to see you again. And you? How have you been? Okay. I suppose. That's good. I've been lonely. Very lonely. I'm faced with a stark and unpleasant choice. Be lonely or get murdered. Not very exciting as it goes. Huh. Uh, I suppose pick lonely? Did you miss me? Uh, I suppose so. Yes, I missed you too. I've been quite lonely out here. One day, I long to have a wife, but women can be so cruel. Nobody wants large children. They eat too much. It's very sad. 
Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I'm really surprised and happy. There's so many really interesting and unique things to find in this world. Rockstar Games truly went to great lengths to add some mysteries for us to uncover, and right now I'm just wondering what more is there that has not been found yet. But continuing on, in the first episode we found a meteor, which landed in someone's house, which unfortunately took all the lives of those who resided there. It was actually pretty graphic and unlucky for those people with body parts that seemed to have been ripped off by the meteorite. But anyway, nearby there actually is a much bigger meteor site. It's just west of Brandywine Drop and the meteor house, which is not mapped on the save file I was on, but you can see the shack. Now, when you arrive to this site, you can see everything in this area has been destroyed, and what lies in the center is a massive meteor, which Arthur will make a drawing of in his journal. Next, this time going to the eastern side of Brandywine Drop in Annisburg, we have a rare shotgun that can be obtained. You need to walk up to this house, and the homeowner does not take kindly to outsiders, so immediately once he comes out, take him out. I failed a little bit with my shot, but I got the job done, and then walked up to the now deceased homeowner and took his rare shotgun. The official description in the compendium of this weapon says, A rare double-barreled shotgun with faded brass tarnish and adorned with carvings. Previously owned and cherished by a lonely woodsman living in solitude amongst the trees and wildlife of Roanoke Ridge, this gun has an ammo capacity of two rounds and can use regular buckshot, incendiary buckshot, slug, and explosive slug shotgun ammo. Yeah, but after finding this weapon, I made my way down to the Annisburg mine and just had some fun with it, and it certainly packs some punch. Now, heading all the way back to the Wapiti Reservation, we next have is a unique tomahawk. This can be found just east of the reservation, and it's actually very close to the start of the talking giant interaction that we talked about earlier, but once you get there, you'll find this ancient tomahawk stuck in a log that seems to have been used for target practice. Again, to the compendium, the description of this weapon says, A traditional native tomahawk with a striped bound shaft and polished sharp blade. Although showing some signs of its age, this weapon has been well maintained by one of the locals. This melee weapon was found lodged in a broken wooden target overlooking Calumet Ravine and the Grizzlies. So, I did use this tomahawk once on somebody and took them out. I'm not really into melee weapons or throwing knives or throwing tomahawks at people or animals, but I have a feeling that some of you may like that style of combat. Either way, I will admit, I really do like the style of this weapon. Next, if you make your way all the way to the mountains of West Elizabeth, right under the Big Valley marker, you'll find an old mine, which holds some valuable items. So once you enter into the mine, you'll have to use the dynamite plunger to gain access to clear some of the rocks that are on the way, but once you crouch down and get inside, you need to take a right, which will lead to a dead body that looks like the killer tried hiding. But in this miner's back, you can grab the wide blade knife, which has a description that says, a rare hunting knife with a wide clip point blade and worn curved wooden handle. This knife was found sticking out of the back of a corpse deep in the mines of Beryl's Dream, Big Valley. The previous owner of this weapon went to great lengths to prevent their crime from being discovered. And next to the body, you'll also find the mining hat, which may come in handy in dark locations. Not exactly the greatest looking hat, but it certainly has its benefits. This next easter egg is just a bit strange, I guess? North of Strawberry and east of Mount Shan, you'll find a giant ape statue that got left behind. It looks like it may have fallen off of a stagecoach, but I don't know, it just kind of weird finding it left behind, and there isn't a way to interact or make note of it in Arthur's journal, it's just kind of there. But finally, to our last secret, we have is a tiny church that can be found by the Lakay marker on the map, and you can actually walk inside this tiny church, and there's tiny chairs lying around, and there's some other smaller things that makes me wonder if there was at one time small people or things residing there. Not really sure, but Arthur will again take note of this unique location in his journal. But nonetheless, we discussed a a lot of unique moments and things that you can find in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. If you found something strange or unique that I have not mentioned before, let me know down in the comment section below, but thank you all for the support on these videos, it really does mean the world to me, and make sure to leave a like if you want to see more of this series. There will be a link in the description to this series playlist so you can stay caught up, but also consider subscribing for much more Red Dead Redemption 2 content to come, as I'm one of your best sources on this game, and remember, Outlaws for life.